Okay, so let's get this um, project, this fun mixed media wall hanging project started. This is the little plaque. This is how it looked when I picked it up from the clearance bin. And then I've got my um, green sparkle paste and I've got Berry Bliss um, embossing texture paste. I've got chalk paint in wild moss and sandstone. I've got a piece of primed chipboard. I've got the cobblestone pebble um, stencil. I've got a large script stencil. I've got a 4x4 burlap um, panel. I've got this pretty wreath that I fussy cut from the um, succulent garden collection. And then I've got an assortment of succulent flowers that we're going to add to this. So first things first, we want to um, just take a little sanding tool and here we go. And we're just going to go over this very quickly just to kind of give it some shape. And we do that so that our paint will be able to stick. And the first thing we're going to do is take this um, sandstone, which is a really good color match for my background. And I've already shaken this so it's ready to go. And I'm just going to thin this with a tiny bit of water because I want it to be sort of like a wash instead of a real coat of paint. So I'm just going to thin this out a little bit and then we're just going to brush this over because I want to um, cover up the design that's on there. I don't want that on there. And then we're just going to dry it with our heat gun. And I'm going to take a little bit of this um, wild moss, just a dab. Lighten it with the sandstone. Hit it with some water to make it a wash. And that's the great thing about chalk paint is that you can thin it. And then just randomly go over this area. One more coat and I think we'll be good. I'm just going to go back with a final wash of the sandstone. And this is just real random strokes here. And while I've got the paint on my brush, I'm going to bring in my burlap panel. And I'm just going to go around the edges with it. Waste not, want not. And I'm just going to randomly brush some on here. So that's looking really good. So you can see how soft and pretty this finish is. I really like that. There's the little bit of the um, stone color, or some of the original wood. I really, really love the way this looks. To add another layer of texture and dimension, we're going to lay this script stencil over the right hand half of our palette and just kind of lay that down there. And then we're going to take our um, sparkle paste, if I can open the jar. There we go. And here's a tip for this. Make sure you wipe the jar edge clean. It comes in a little tin like this. I left some of the sparkle paste on the edge and I couldn't get the lid off. So I had to cut it open from the bottom. Um, so don't do that. <laughs> That's not a good thing to do. Um, but it's no problem. I just found a jar in the kitchen. So we're just going to use this green sparkle paste and we're just going to go over this script stencil 
And this is just going to add another little layer of dimension. And although this looks, this is vibrant, but once it gets on the um, surface and it dries, it's just a subtle sparkle. It's got a really nice, almost kind of um, translucent quality to it. So it doesn't overwhelm, which I really like. Um, this green goes so well with the succulents and um, I just I think it's a neat look and if you don't have a palette knife you can use an old credit card you can use a um, you know anything that allows you to lay things down you know flat so we're just going to lift this up the other thing you want to know about working with this um, sparkle paste is that it dries very quickly so you do want to either wash or wipe off um, your stencil really quickly so I'm just gonna clean up this little edge that I got here there we go and along the top and then you can heat dry this okay so I think that's dry enough that we can go on to the next part which is I'm going to bring in this pretty cobblestone design and I'm just going to lay it down this is berry bliss embossing paste and we're just going to use this to put down this pretty cobblestone design in the background and I don't want the edges to be perfect I want it to look kind of like an old, broken cobblestone. So I'm just going to take my paper towel and get these little pieces that went off the edge. Clean that up. So now, again, you can dry this with your heat gun, which is really nice, and it will actually emboss. So look how cool this is. This is completely dried, and it embosses and gets this really neat, almost stone looking texture and the color really lightens out a lot too which I love so the, just to take it one step further I'm going to bring my favorite stone wash back in and I'm just going to make a little wash to go over this and just take it down a little just a tiny little bit more And just give it a really nice shabby finish so see look how cool that is you've got the embossing and then the raised portions picked up this little wash that we just made um, and it just looks really shabby and really cool I love this this is awesome this is a great product this is the first time I've used it like this so how fun is that yay and then I'm just gonna again over here just a little I just want to take it down just a little just to make everything kind of soft and shabby if you get um, stuff in the grooves of the palette you can just take your knife and a paper towel and clean like that so that looks good yeah I really really like the way this turned out and course if you want the more vibrant color that's entirely up to you you can certainly do that I just kind of wanted this to be very soft and shabby so I think I want to actually position my burlap panel like this I kind of like the angle of it rather than straight I think it just looks a little more visually interesting so I'm going to go ahead and add my hot glue to the back and adhere this to the wood panel and I like 
the way that looks. That looks good. Now this is our succulent wreath that I cut out. And the way I did the center was I just put this on a um, glass mat. If you don't have a glass mat, you can even use an old picture frame. And I just cut a couple of triangles out of the center with my craft knife and that opened it up. And then I was able to get in there and trim with my scissors. So as you can see, I've kind of distressed it with a little bit of that wash. And then I've added um, just waste chipboard tabs to the back of it to give it a little bit of height. And we're just gonna very quickly add this. And I'm gonna come back and get the rest of it now. And see, it just gives it a little bit more of a presence on the page. And then if you're worried about those little glue webs, can you see where the hot glue is? Just take your, glue, your heat gun and easy enough. So now I've got this lovely primed chipboard from Little Birdie. This is Forever and Always, which I think is just pretty. It fits nicely inside that wreath. And we're going to take our moss green and we're just going to again make a wash just to kind of make that pop a little bit. And then I'm going to bring in some vintage photo distressing and I'm just going to add a shadow around the edges. Just adding that little bit of shading really makes those letters pop. So this we're going to adhere right in the center. So that's going to go down just like that. I'm really liking the way this is turning out. I don't know how you're feeling about it, but I think it's looking pretty good. And let me see, I've got some little pieces that I fussy cut. from Succulent Garden, and I think I want to put one on either side. So let me just very quickly, we'll have a little fussy cutting lesson. Ways to fussy cut, but for this, I want to leave just a little edge on it because this is such detailed. And when you fussy cut, instead of chopping with your scissors, hold your scissors stationary and drive your paper through the scissor blades. This way you get really nice, smooth lines, and you can cut fairly quickly. And then we're just going to add a little, hit that raw edge with our ink. And then we're going to have one above and one below. So for this I can use my hot glue. All right, this is looking really good. Okay, so now the fun part. Let's add our flowers and embellishments. And I've taken some Little Birdie Sizzle. And what I do is I just kind of separate this with my fingernails to fluff it a little bit. And then just add some hot glue over here on the side, just a nice big puddle of it. and then lay this down and this becomes like a little nest for our flowers to rest in. And then I'm going to start with these um, succulent meadow and I want to put this piece kind of right here like the anchor on the corner and I'm just going to get my hot glue on the back side. And these come with little foam tabs on the back, but I want to make sure these really hold. So I took the foam tabs off and I'm adding hot glue. And then I just like to add a little ink. Um, 
it just kind of um, highlights it a little bit. And then these are actually bottle toppers, which are super cute. But I'm going to stick this down in. It's a great way to add a little height. Every flower arrangement needs height. So I'm going to stick that down there into my sisal and put some hot glue back behind it. And then I've got these sweet little hens and chicks. See, Those are just going to go on top and they hide the bottle topper. Um, and they also add, it also adds more height and dimension, which is always a good thing in my world anyway. And then I want this sweet little hen and chick. Oop, need more glue. I'm going to add this one right down here at the base. And then for these little pots, I just brush them with um, ink to add, uh, just to make them look not so, they're so perfect when they come out of the package. I like to shabby them up a little bit. And then let's add a little buddy over here on this side. This is looking so cute. I'm just loving it, it's so cute. All right, so now we need to bring in some other flowers to fill this in, and these are Fiorella Purple. I love these guys because they have um, foliage pieces in there with them, and the, um, look at the beads in the center, beautiful, beautiful. So we're just gonna start placing these around. And again, sometimes I just like to hit these. And again, this is preference, my preference. You certainly don't have to do this. But I like to kind of hit these, either um, dry brush them with a little paint or hit the edges with a little ink. And I'm just gonna place them. So I think we need some white to lighten this up a little bit. So I've got Symphony Ivory, and I these are some of my favorites, the Beaded Blooms in Moonlight. I love these little ones. They're precious. So let's see if we can't lighten the composition of this up.
I like it. I don't know about you, but I think it's really beautiful. Let me clean up the mess so we can really look at it and add just a couple little finishing touches. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've kind of cleaned up my work area a little bit, and I just want to add a couple of little burlap string bows to finish this off. And I'm just going to put the first one down here in this corner. And when you do this, I just like to use the point of my scissors to place that because that way I don't burn my fingers. And then just kind of fluff that out to finish it. And then I think one more over here. that out and the very last thing I want to do is add some of this hearty melange these are silver hearts and it's a really neat little glitter so I always like to use either a funnel tray or a piece of um, card stuck underneath to catch the mess so we're just going to use our glue gun and we're going to Run a little bead of glue in there, then we're going to open our bottle, and we're just going to tip this into there, and then tip it out. See, isn't that cute? Look how cute that is. And then, of course, you can pick this up and go right back into your bottle. And then I want to add a little bit over in here, just kind of randomly. Same thing. And tip it out. And maybe, maybe just a little bit up in here. I really like it's not like hit you in the between the eyes glitter but it's just a really soft little finish and let's do just a little bit more over here in this corner so you can see how fun this is to take um, a sort of okay wooden piece that you maybe find at the craft store and turn it into a really beautiful home decor piece wall hanging I just added the thread that it came with back through the top and I think that's perfect I don't think we need to do anything else that's wonderful thank you so much for joining me I hope I've shared some tips and tricks and ideas that you could use in your own crafty adventures if so I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below and now I am going to go get my craft on bye